Good afternoon world and welcome to another episode of Tandatula Sopa Safari. Uh, apologies for not getting one out last weekend but uh, we were pleasingly rather busy at the lodge. A um, couple of full weekends with long weekends here in Southern, oh, Southern Africa in South Africa and um, yeah I think I've been driving for the last week and a half. been wonderful being out with guests. Um, Gaming's been a little bit tougher but um, we managed, managed very well, uh, mating leopards, leopards with kills, um, river pride were quite scarce but the Baluli females and Dundee male were around, uh, lots of wild dogs, nice big pack of 31 in the far west, well they started on Nkari property but moved to the far west, a pack of 12 has been around for much of the rest of that time so yeah it's been good um, but that's in the past, this is now. So uh, we're going to head out there, the Savi, and see what we can find. I know the guides this morning did have the River Pride on our southern boundary, so that's the plan to head there a little later once things cool down. Um, but yeah, we'll just bumble around, check on some water holes, and uh, see what this afternoon and this episode brings. So uh, grab your coffee, grab your GNT, and uh, enjoy the next half hour of uh, virtual safaris straight from the heart of Timbavati here at Tandatula. Enjoy. Of course, the first animal I see runs away. It was a young kudu, only a couple of months old, but growing quickly. As always with these uh, antelopes, born with enormous ears that they almost have to grow into. Um, they remain hidden for the first few weeks of their lives. So we saw a couple, I think some actually featured on the Sofa Safari series, but um, nice to start seeing a few more. Probably would have been a relatively successful year for them. Having the cover that these moms had to keep the babies hidden in should have provided them with some adequate protection. But it's so much a case of luck when it comes to whether or not any predators stumble upon them. We have seen one or two kudus being eaten by leopards this year, and that's purely fortuitous. The leopard doesn't go out searching for them, just happen to come across where they're hidden, and uh, if they do that, it's game over. A little implausibility of wildebeest. These guys are still hanging around. Although maybe not in the numbers they were a few months ago, but I think that is primarily down to the fact that if you notice many of the females haven't got their calves with them anymore. Unfortunately I think the lions have taken the toll on the herds in this eastern part. Though we have seen a couple of adults um, falling prey to lions, the calves are not going to last long, so catch them at night and uh, we're not going to see any more of them. Uh, I've noticed actually the herds in the west still full of babies, but um, our eastern herds are, the you know, calving season hasn't been as successful. And sorry, it sounds like I'm just talking about predators killing babies at the moment. I'll try try end on a more positive note, I promise. Unfortunately, that is just sometimes the reality of the bush that we live in. Oh, but nature does love proving me wrong, because as I go around the corner, he has a wad of babies. So, not as dire a situation as I thought about 30 seconds ago, but it doesn't take away from the fact that I have definitely noticed that these some of these eastern herds are not as full with calves as they were only a few weeks ago. A little sounder of warthogs. Mom and her two generations of youngsters going running off to the right. Oh, that's actually a big male, never mind. Yeah, see, a bunch of piglets from this year. And looks like uh, well, maybe two moms. There's tail sticking up as they run away. So characteristic and so comical of these guys. Just in conditions like this when the grasses are so long, and those piglets have to follow the mother, they can't see where she's running through the grass, so having that tail that sticks up above it acts like a, a follow me sign, a following mechanism. Very, very cool. 
very unpleasant light against this elephant, but uh, noticed just because there was a trunk sticking up above the tree. But now that I look at that trunk, it's actually lost the tip of it. Probably not going to let me see it now that I want to film it, but um, it looks as though, yeah, it has lost the tip. Now, there are a couple of explanations. Um, it no, uh, could have been something like a crocodile when it went to drink water that grabbed it, possibly even as a youngster. Could even be something as unsavory as a snare that at some point in its wanderings it got caught in a snare set for bushmeat. Yeah, it's a sad reality. We still have those problems here. Uh, it could also have just been some other physical injury that resulted in the tip of this trunk getting infected and, and, and like it's falling off, but that's far less likely than the first two options. However, looking at the age, the feeding behavior and the general condition of this guy does not seem to be affecting it in any seriously negative light. Um, maybe go. You can see the nostrils are still opened. So they haven't sealed shut, but those two prehensile finger-like projections that um, are so useful for feeding and manipulating food into the tip of that trunk are missing. But uh, they're adaptable, smart animals, and uh, has just figured out how to get by in life without that. Uh, still a, a very, very useful appendage, even without those projections. Uh, you can see how it's moving the trunk around, grabbing up large swads of grass and putting them into the mouth with no issue. I've been hedging my afternoon on finding the River Pride resting out in the open here in our southeastern corner. Heard of wildebeest, no babies, or few babies, and no lions. Um, they may have gone down into the Mayambula River They've gone up towards Piggy Pan. Um, it's cooling down, sun's heading towards the horizon for a yeah, wintry sunset, but uh, no lion. So I'm going to maybe just try to loop around to Piggy Pan, see if there's any sign of them there, but I don't want to go walking into a very thick riverbed. I've walked on the open areas, they're not there, but I suspect based on the bird calls, they may just be resting up in the shade still. But let us let us see what we can find. I have a little wake of vultures, white black vultures sitting in this dead tree just to the west of where the lions were left this morning. It's late in the evening now, I don't know if they're just settling there, they seem to be preening and getting ready for a night of rest, but it may well be that the lions got active and did something during the day. Didn't see any tracks, can't hear any sounds of them feeding or fighting. Some elephants I can hear in that block. But uh, I'll just carry on around, see if there's anything more, otherwise, check up here again tomorrow. So, my afternoon was not the roaring success I hoped it would be, and that is a very poor, very unintended pun, I'm afraid. Um, I was hoping that it was going to be full of river pride and uh, the males, the cubs, everyone was together this morning, but they were not there. Very likely just chased down into the riverbed by that herd of elephants also possibly made a kill. Uh, maybe those vultures were there for something that happened during the day because by the sounds of things they did not have any hunting success last night. So we'll carry on in the morning. Um, it's just been great being back out in the beautiful surrounds of the Timbavati enjoying a chilled afternoon. Um, plenty more of this episode to come so don't go away. Stay tuned. Wrapped up in jackets, it is a much chillier start to the day, even though we have some nice cloud cover, still that uh, autumn freshness in the air. Uh, we are going to be carrying on looking for our river pride, following up on what we couldn't find yesterday. What did they get up to last night? Did they make a kill yesterday? Was it just coincidence the vultures were there? Who knows, but uh, you will probably find out shortly enough, so uh, carry on, enjoy.
She was having a scratch then, and it looks like she's just going to be having a poop by the rock. <laughs> I'm not even going to be doing that. Come on, guys. Put on a show. But a nice little herd of zebra. Let me pick up the distant whoops of a hyena. Been hoping while I've been stopping and watching them that I'd hear the calls of our Nauru males, but they are remaining so far silent this morning. Always beautiful, peaceful starts to the day here in the bush. Lovely little family of elephants here at a spot called Piggy Pan. And amongst all the green reeds there's a nice amount of water. I was hoping to find the lions, but uh, they appear not to have come through here yet anyway. Here are the little babies. They are being constantly photobombed by their herd members. That is not okay. Really? Here we go. I'm back where these lines were yesterday morning. Um, you may hear the monkeys alarm calling in the background, which is a sure sign that there is a predator here. I'd actually walked here earlier, got back to the car, went to check on where the vultures were. The vultures are still there, and that's when I heard the monkeys. But um, yeah, I can't see anything. Couldn't see tracks when I walked around. So they may just be in this dense, thick Mayambula drainage. But, um, yeah, I'll give it a little bit more time. But not falling into place like I hoped. So, in the absence of real animals, because that's what it feels like this morning, um, i got to show you some signs of them. But uh, what we have over here is a beautiful, if I get the sun out the way, uh, example of a rubbing post. Uh, you might be able to see the shiny nature of this log. So this is going to be something that would have been here for years. And used by the rhinos in particular. Um, quite often they'll have favoured rubbing logs within their territories. And uh, after mud wallows they come and they rub up against this. It hasn't been used for a while but got this wonderful polished appearance. Um, flattened around you so it looks as though they're not the only I'm oh sorry I should say the grass is flattened around you it's not only the rhinos that are going to use this wildebeest zebras and a whole bunch of others may also come and make use of these rubbing posts normally situated much closer to water holes and mud wallows but this is kind of randomly placed but uh, sticking out amongst the nice grassy areas so the animals find it easily a little tree squirrel sitting beautifully on a very nice mature leadwood tree, a characteristic light grey, almost uh, reptilian-like bark. And I need to talk about the tree because the squirrel looks like he's frozen stiff. This is a video, do do do, not a photo. <laughs> they actually have a little hole in there. There's a younger one that came out, but sitting dead still possibly because there's a bunch of squirrels alarm calling to our um, southern side here. I'm still searching for these lines. I'm not giving up just yet. But um, the squirrels really are freaking out and there's some Franklins going too. So maybe there is something going on down the road. A 
in all the glory that is 4K. There we go. Waiting for these uh, little chaps to come out. There's two calves who are getting very excited with each other and playing around. So yeah, my um, lion search has proved very, very unsuccessful uh, and most frustrating. Even though I'm on my own and don't have anybody to... Um, there we go. Don't have anybody to please on these game drives. I still want to see these animals. So when they're not playing along, I take it very personally. Luckily, this little guy is more than making up for it. Look at this. Oh, and now there's two. The trouble has doubled. Now that the grasses are starting to dry and become a little less nutritious, Time for these elephants to start turning to the leafy material. I do recall last year when even late into the year, June, July, they were still feeding on a lot of grass. And that will still be the case. So we're right here on the crest um, in the middle of the Meshutton and the Shaolumi. So your grasses are not going to be as good and as moist as they will be on the um, river lines. So once these herds hit, hit areas that have green grass, they will no doubt turn to that grass. But for now, a variety of terminalias and uh, gruvias, um, raisin bushes, that's what they're going to be enjoying here. And this creeper that they're always eating. In fact, I'm going to ask if there are any of you, any guides out there that bother watching these. If you do know what this creeper that they eat is. It seems to grow along the ground in between the grasses. And they lap it up. And they've been doing this for months now. The hab habitual wagging of the tails. As soon as do they start their day and those tails are busy. And so is it the habitual eating. And I always feel bad if I eat as soon as I wake up. This is their life. And uh, we won't talk about the habitual pooping either. I think we've seen enough of that on this episode already. Oh, it's got a... Looks like an Adam's apple. I think it's just a fold in the skin as opposed to a, a growth, although it is indeed a growth actually now that I look a little closer. I realize I haven't actually done plants or trees for a while and uh, driving out in the section of the reserve there's one that really stands out at the moment because of all the red flowers um, this we call pride of the cape Buhinia gelpinii and uh, have these marvelous red flowers quite large I mean you can see relative to my hand um, you've got the Beautiful red petals and the reproductive parts in the middle. And um, during this time of year when they flower, they really, really stand out. Um, the tree itself is a kind of a multi, multi stemmed. I really struggle with these alliterated liter, S's. Wow. <laughs> it's because I woke up too early. A uh, multi stemmed um, shrub. And uh, they kind of creep on top of other 
trees around riverine areas, uh, particularly uh, here along the Sharlumi. We've got some in front of Safari Camp too. Um, but throughout the course of the Sharlumi, and they make these thickets. Uh, and with these, or within these thickets, uh, we've on numerous occasions had our lions coming to den within the Pride of the Cape thickets. Um, it's probably why I haven't shown you any. I'm a bit reluctant to come walking into them where they grow. Uh, but yeah, really, really beautiful and um, characteristic two-lobed leaves as well. Uh, not quite as separated as our Mapanis, but yeah, that is the two-lobed leaves, red flowers which makes them stand out. As well as their growth form on the riverbanks. Uh, and that is it, the pride of the Cape, uh, Bohemia, Galpinii, enjoyed by kudus and the animals that like these riverine environments, so bushbucks, dakers, uh, black rhinos as well. So um, now that you saw that on our last episode, maybe if we hang around these... Uh, Pride of the Cape thickets, we'll get to see uh, our black rhino yet again. Um, Ginger did find that male lion, unfortunately, he walked into an area and got lost. Well, he didn't get lost, the uh, visual of him was lost, but apparently looking very, very skinny, it is the limping male. Uh, but they are tracks for the rest of the pride. So uh, we're gonna go, go carry on and see what we can find. Elephant bull following behind a breeding herd. Looking at the amount of moisture dripping out of his temporal gland, I may be in must, although, as we've said many times before, just because he does, doesn't mean that, um, just because he does weep from the gland doesn't mean he's in must. Females will do it. It can be elicited by emotional responses, um, getting a fright, uh, getting excited. But um, he's going from marula to marula. Yeah, a few more coming up from behind him. And he was reaching up a moment ago to get to the branches. As you can see from these marula trees, all, almost all the low branches have been ripped down. That one's got a wonderful side branch uh, poking out there. Let's hope he doesn't touch that one. Um, in the previous episode, we saw the damage that the elephants have been um, impact or imparting upon these marula trees by ring barking them so extensively. Fortunately, ginger. I think I've come fortunately here um, we have got um, good tree conservation practices uh, on um, this property here and uh, our owner Ricky's had all of these trees wrapped with wire which stops them from getting their tusks in and ring barking it. Let's see if he does reach up and grab another branch. He's feeding on these marula branches like he is now. You'll actually see how he eats the whole thing. He doesn't just worry about ring barking it on the fresh new growth. The branches are not particularly thick, but uh, in a parenchyma tissue is not particularly hard, and they'll just consume the whole thing. Bark, wood, leaves. Well, he's a bit off the leaves there. Yeah, those massive motors grinding the wood. It's one part, but then your digestive system to get nutrition out of that is even more impressive. I said before how it's not a particularly efficient digestive system, but it's very good at what it does. And that's processing bulk food. So although it maybe only takes up 30 or 40%, Sorry, maybe we we're just talking about tracks for the River Pride, close to Mukari um, Camp, which is interesting because the females haven't been that side for months and months.
always. Sorry, there's an impala shouting behind me. I don't know if he has seen me and thinks there's something or what's going on. But um, yeah, always great spending time with these giants and just to see them stretching up and pulling the branches down on magic. Um, this I can tolerate. Don't destroy the trees, don't push them over. Eat the branches by all means, but um, hey, they are elephants doing their thing. Um, hear him crunching through. But uh, yeah, we're going to leave him be. Um, I had a point I wanted to make, but I, it has escaped me now. Oh, yes. Obviously, my uh, cell phone was working a little bit there, which is great. Um, guaranteed that if there's good action that I needed to work in, it's going to die on me. But uh, welcome back, iPhone video. More flowers for the episode. Um, we've got here something called narrow leafed vernonias. Vernonia glabras. These beautiful purple flowers. Uh, I remember they appeared last year with um, I think it was orange tip butterflies that were flying or landing on them and, and going for the nectar. And we just, oh, I don't know what it was back then, but uh, now I do. And there's uh, plenty of it growing in this section at the moment. Narrow leafed Venonia, Venonia glabra. You'll probably hear from this that they are not the quietest eaters. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Probably best to get a last look at these beautiful European rollers before they head back home. Um, we're coming into April now. Uh, so it's, oh, there we go. Nice poop. Just continuing with the morning's theme or the episode's theme. Um, yeah, uh, I'm sure by the time I get out and film the next episode, there shan't be any more of these guys um, in our area. They're bulking up, putting on a bit of weight. I wish I could use that excuse. Preparing for migrations every day. But uh, they yeah, have to put on some muscle weight uh, and fat reserves so that they can make the long flight back. Maybe he's beginning today, who knows. Oh boy, even they don't want to pose. But yes, we're going to see more and more of, this, of these males breaking off on their own, establishing territories. Rutting season is upon us. Yep. Always a great time of year. It's uh, April, May time. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to bring you some of the action. Yeah, we have Mr. Tall, Dark and Handsome. Definitely not me. A uh, beautiful, mature male giraffe feeding on the dense thick green banks of the Meshutton. You can see the difference there, the brown grasses in the foreground, but uh, these evergreens along the river staying just that, evergreen and very green. <laughs> and even at five and a half meters tall, some branches are still a little too tall for them. So that adaptation that you see there with them being able to tilt the head so that it's on the same axis as the the length of the neck is due to modified atlas joint. Uh, we can't do that. And very few animals can. So combine that with that 30-40 centimeter tongue and um, you suddenly get an extra couple of feet worth of uh, feeding potential in there. But uh, it seemed like too much effort especially when there's some good greenery just below Gorgeous specimen. So yeah, these mature males, as they get older, they do get darker. But last year or the year before, they released an article saying that uh, the darkness of the coat is a function of their social status, which I disagree with slightly. Um, they basically said they will, when they get dark, they move off on their own because they're now kind of in their prime and sexually mature. Which does happen, but I don't think that their social status is the reason that they change colour. I think it's personally, 
as a non-scientist that it's due to age and as they get old and reach that sexual maturity and get darker because of that reaching of their so not sexual maturity sexual prime that they break away and become solitary it's not because they suddenly got dark that they become solitary but it's just because they've reached an age it's usually around 12 years old i'm getting very bored with my story so i'm going to leave him there so yeah you can see nice dark bull got there due to age it signifies to the females that he is in his prime darker males likely more attractive to females than the lighter ones just like it is with lions and uh, as a result of being in his prime he wanders around on his own looking for females and that's just what he's going to do so just when i was fearing that we had no lions there are tracks yeah and you can see there's one male there another male there a couple of our narus have come walking up here and that's my door ignore the door you sometimes just have those days where the big game doesn't play along. But then it's always uh, enjoyable to have scenes like this. A couple of foals on the end there. I've just received word that those two Nara males have been found north of our boundary. So par for the course of the last few drives, unfortunately, uh, there's going to be no lion excitement on this drive. But um, I'm going to be heading back to camp. I am driving guests from today until I go and leave. I'm on leave and then when I get back I've got more guests. Um, so I'll put together this episode, but it does mean that for the next while, uh, with our occupational uh, duties and um, work getting busier which is great for us and great for business um, also with Luke and Britt having taken time off for the birth of their son Lennon congratulations to both of you by the way uh, it does mean that there's not going to be anybody around to do these sofa safaris for the coming weeks so um, yes as soon as I'm back and as soon as I have a chance to get out I will do so um, but I apologize for not being able to be able to get any more episodes out before I go away but I'm sure you understand and it will just uh, leave you wanting more so uh, please be sure to keep a look on this uh, YouTube channel also our Facebook and other social media pages we will let you know when the next episode is out but I do hope that you have enjoyed this one a slightly quieter than normal one but um, you know that is the push uh, but hopefully now with the Easter weekend coming up there's going to be a few more eyes and ears out there and I'm sure the game viewing will be fantastic for those coming to visit us uh, but anyway until next time everyone have a fantastic uh, Easter if you are traveling stay safe and be careful and uh, yeah we will catch you again on Sofa Safaris at some point in the hopefully the not too distant future until then cheerio at long last we have a cat we have the Sometimes present near Letty. I would say ever present, but uh, yeah, she gives us a run around. I'm sure it was Shigoro that was on that kill that I was talking about yesterday that the vultures are feeding on. That went and claimed it. Uh, and uh, about a kilometer further down the road, uh, driving with Glenn, and he pointed up at the tree, and there was near Letty sitting in a marula with a impala kill. Um, it's almost done. She went to fetch Shigoro. Uh, he may be around here, he was here this morning, um, but uh, resting full belly. There's not much of the kill left at all. So, uh, yeah, amongst two leopards, the impala doesn't go very far, but she's found a nice spot on a termite mound to rest. Once again, that rapid breathing, that's a um, good indication of a good feed. Probably a little bit of discomfort too. It's uh, shaping up to be a warm afternoon. Not a cloud in the sky. I see a couple of large ticks latched onto her face, one by the eye, one on the cheek. Probably not too much of a bother. They are generally clean cats, you can see from the grooming that they do. Um, they're able to get many of these parasites off. 
although looking at how that ear is flicking around, there's uh, some flies that are bothering her too. You get that thorn out, girl. Just sad looking leopard with that eye. <laughs> I will be honest, she's definitely not the most beautiful leopard we have walking around here, but uh, a character in her own right. Yeah, there we go. Uh, shows what having a skilled tracker can do for sightings. Three drives on my own saw nothing. Give Glenn a couple of drives and he whips out near Letty and a kill, which is actually up in the tree there, there's almost nothing left. Uh, and the River Pride. So um, yeah, never underestimate the value of a skilled tracker. So uh, thank you, Glenn. And uh, thank you, folks. Uh, as I say, I'm uh, going on leave very busy for the next couple of weeks. So I will see you at some point in the new f near future. I can't tell you exactly when the next episode will be out, but it will be coming. So uh, take care, uh, look after yourselves, and uh, now is officially goodbye.